Well, good morning. You're going to be awake and responsive. You had your coffee. We're good? All right. <laughs> good to see everybody. And um, I'm excited to, to, to speak this morning, and I hope that you don't need the message, okay? Uh, no, and the truth is we, we all do uh, from time to time, and, and, and uh, it's probably the thing that I get uh, the most prayer requests for. Uh, the thing that I hear over and over and over that people are dealing with, uh, you know, teenagers deal with it all the time, and they get young adults, and they deal with it, and then you become older, and well, why don't you just tell you what we're going to talk about. Um, there's a lot of different ways we could label it, but it's stress, it could be called worry, it could be called anxiety, you might even could throw fear in there, but over and over and over, this is what I hear, I'm so stressed out. I'm really worried about this situation. I have a lot of anxiety, okay, and there's all this, and it's, it's so common in, in our lives, and um, it doesn't have to be. In fact, for me, I would have probably called stress most of my life my default. Do you know what a default is? Like, okay, if you open up Microsoft Word and you just start typing, there's a default font, right? It's, it's the font that if you don't change it, it's probably Arial or one of those things, okay? And it's the one that you just, you didn't do anything and it just defaulted to it, okay? I, I know you don't care, but here's the definition of default, okay? Default <laughs> is a pre-selected option adopted by a computer program or other mechanism when no alternative is specified by the user or programmer. Okay, now for me, I don't know about you, but for much of my life, I felt like stress was my pre-selected option. Have you ever felt that way? If anything just didn't go exactly right, here comes my stress, okay? If any problem occurred, if anything like that, my pre-selected option was always to just be stressed out about it, to worry about it, to stay up at night, can't sleep kind of a thing. But there's a good news is that an alternative can be specified, okay? Um, like if you got a phone, when you got your phone, there was a default background, right? You know what I'm talking about? Sorry, some, I don't know, thing that they came up with. For me, I have a, an alternative specified. I get to look at my beautiful wife and daughter every time I turn on my phone because I have specified an alternative. And here's what I want you to say, or I wanted you to know. If worry and stress is your default, it's time to specify an alternative in your life. And you don't have to default to stress when things don't go right. You don't have to default to worry or being afraid when there's a problem. Your default can be something else, and I want us to, to get to that. What the problem often, though, is, is we would say something along these lines. I am stressed because blank, right? And um, maybe you use the word worried or anxious or whatever, but there's, there's this blank. And I don't know <laughs> what yours is, and, and everybody's blank is different, right? And it's actually different from, in your own life, from different stages and different phases and different weeks and sometimes different days. We would have our different things. So, you know, when, with um, high school and junior high students, right now a lot of them are saying, I'm stressed because I don't know if my parents are going to make me do online school or on ground school, and I really am tired of being at home, okay? <laughs> and they have that kind of a worry. They don't know what's going to happen there. And, or, you know, when they get into school, a lot of times it's now I'm worried about my grades. Or I'm worried about this audition. I'm stressed about this thing that's coming up. I'm stressed because I've been single for my whole life. And, and there's all those kind of stresses. And then they become a little older, and now they're worried about college and which college and which major, which career. And you get a little older, and then you're worried about, you know, is this the right spouse? Is this the right thing? And then you have kids, and then there's like a whole new world of worry, you know. It's like, are they going to, when you have a little baby, you know, and you learn about all these things they can die from, like some parents are just staring at them all night, <laughs> are they going to make it through the night? You know, you got that worry, and then they get older, and they get their first cell phone. You're like, is a 13-year-old really going to have access to the whole world on their, <laughs> the, all the internet, all the time? I got to do something about this. I'm worried. And you give them a driver's license in a car, that's, I'm not there yet, thank the Lord. That's a whole nother world of worry, okay? And you're, you're like, oh, they're out there now, okay? And, and just on and on it goes, okay? And we, through our entire life, just seem to have blanks. And um, it, it, maybe you've experienced this. You finally solved one, and you turn, and you're like, there's a blank, right? There's another one. And, and it seems like we go boom, to blank, to blank, to blank, to problem. And if the only way that you can rid yourself of stress is to rid yourself of whatever's in this blank, you will spend most of your life with stress. Because that's not the key to living without stress is to have a, a blank-free life. It, there's, there's more to that. And actually, it's even worse than just going from blank to blank. Because a lot of us, we don't just stress over these big things. We make up stuff. 
You play the what if game, right? I'm stressed because what if? What if this happens? What if they lay off? What if the stock market goes down? What if this event? What if the things are going? What, what, and we can what if ourselves into stresses that don't even exist. I'm guilty of this myself. Um, one time my wife was up uh, doing some things, and uh, I, she had been away for a while, so I texted her, and I said, hey, how are you, how are you doing? Waited about 15 minutes, I didn't hear back. I was like, hey, what's up? A few more minutes, I'm like, hey, would you let me know you're okay? And then I'm texting like every, you know, a minute, okay? <laughs> it's like, come on, answer your phone. And then I'm just sending like periods and just so her, <laughs> and then finally I'm calling and she's not answering, I'm calling, I called where she works and, and, I, and I'm just, and she won't answer and I, now I'm just like, oh no, something has happened. You know, I'm, I'm panicking, I'm ready to call the FBI, I don't know, I'm just, all this, she calls, she goes, hey, I'm sorry, I missed your call. Um, I was, I left my phone in the car, is everything okay? I'm like, I just thought you were dead on the side of the road. Uh, you know, I was about to start driving all over DFW trying to find you, but yeah, no, everything's fine. And I had invented this whole world of possibilities in here, right? And I and Craig came up with all the stress. So we've got our, our real things that we worry about, and then we've got our invented things that we worry about. And then, it gets even worse, we stress about stuff that can't change, you're sitting there going, oh, if I would have just said it different, if I would have just said it like that, then, or you no, know, if I could have just, you know, if I wouldn't have gone there. When, and now you're worried, you're thinking about, stressed out about your past, which doesn't change, by the way. You can't go, there's no time machine, no DeLorean, none of that. You can't go back, okay? You can't change that. And, and, or and other things, there's all kinds of things we worry about that can't change. When I was uh, growing up and, you know, getting taller, um, so I'm currently um, five, eight and a half. Okay, and you know you're short when you include the halves. Okay, because we're proud of that extra half. When you're over, when you're like six four, you don't talk about the extra half. Okay, you're just, I'm six four. Okay, but when you're under five ten, like me, you're kind of I like that extra half on there. And so I'm growing up, right? And all my friends are taller than me. I'm like, am I gonna get taller? Am I gonna grow? You know, <laughs> get another growth spurt. And Jesus just like jumps right in the middle of that one. That's uh, he says it like this. Okay, he goes, which of you can make yourself a little taller by worrying? Like, that's not very sensitive, Jesus, okay? But who can, none of us, okay? Worrying is, a, this is not something that you can change. And yet, um, somebody, some people worry about that. And I don't know, you know, what that would be for you, but a lot of times we have things in our life that if, we're, if we really recognize it, they're not gonna change, and yet we're worrying about it. And so what we do is we enter what I would call the spin cycle of worry. It looks like this. You wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And you get back in bed. And then your brain starts spinning. You know what I'm talking about? It's like your bladder and your brain are conspiring against your sleep. Okay, because here you are. You get in bed and you're ready to go back to sleep. And your brain goes, we have that problem. And you go, oh. What are we going to do about that when I get up? Okay, so maybe if I talk to her about it in a different way. But, you know, I tried talking to her about it before, and it didn't work. And, oh, my gosh, what if that happens? It could get so bad. And all of a sudden, you're spinning, right? And your brain is just, and you're getting dizzy watching me. Just be glad you're not me, okay? And so you're sitting here, and it's spinning, and you're spinning. And, all, and you finally, you, you, you get to the end, and you're exactly where you started, only now you're very disoriented, okay? And, and now I need my stool that I didn't bring today, Okay. And, and you've been spinning, and it hasn't done anything. Now you've, and then you go, and you get to your day, and you're on your way to work. Oh, I don't know if they're going to bring that up. They better not bring that up. I, ooh, they'll always bring that. And now you're concerned, and you're stressed out because if that happens again, and you know, I heard they're going to lay off, and what? Well, and, and here you go. You're spinning all the way to work, or you're spinning all the way at school, and you're in these situations, and and you're disoriented, and you're and it's it's not helping anything, and we're in that trapped. We're trapped in that spin, that spin of stress, that spin of worry in our life. And the good news is. You can get out of that spin. You can break free of that. And Jesus jumped right into the middle of it and just teaches us just straight how to defeat worry and, and get out of that in your life. And it's, uh, I, I don't know what caused him to teach it, probably because he needed us to know it. I was just thinking about how great it would have been to like been one of the disciples just walking next to Jesus. Anytime you were worried, you could just be like, is this going to work out? <laughs> and just look at his face, you know? And he's like, <laughs> then you're like, oh, okay. If he smiles, I'm good, you know? I'm, I don't know what you would have asked him. I know what the teenager would ask him. Am I going to stay single? Why are you laughing? <laughs> I don't know what they, would have, what they would have asked. Okay, I don't know what you would have asked. But Jesus comes right in and he goes, hey, um, let's talk about worry, okay? And here's what he says. He says this. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry, which sounds just like a command to me. And it's one of those, like, I feel like, how can you commend, okay? Like, I understand, do not kill. That's easy to accomplish. You don't stab people, okay? And, and, you, and you do that. I understand, do not steal. If you're at Walmart, you don't have the money, leave it on the shelf, okay? Easy to do. I can obey those. Do not worry. 
Just turn it off? Like, I mean, what, how do you just do? Maybe he's talking about stuff that doesn't really matter, okay? Don't worry about those imaginary what-if ones, okay? This is what he says. Do not worry about your life. Okay, that one sounds big, okay? Maybe uh, that one is important. Uh, in fact, that's pretty much all we worry about, right? Our life. And he says, what you will eat, what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. Now he starts talking about some pretty big things. I mean, if you don't have any food, that's a big deal. If you're without drink, right, um, that's a big deal. If you don't have any clothes, watch church online, okay? Um, but you, you're in trouble, okay? And so uh, these are some big things he's beginning to talk about, okay? And, and he, he starts to help us understand how to deal with this. He says, is not life more important than food? And the body more important than clothes? And you read that, you'll go, okay, yeah, I understand. Life's more important than food. The body's more important than clothes. But Jesus you kind of need food to have life, right? And clothes, I mean, we live in society. We need, we need these things, okay? And he's not saying they're not important. He's taking us in a direction that we need to understand. And he, he goes on and he says this, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Now, you could look at this and take it wrong and be like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna be like the birds. We're not gonna work, not do anything. Just take it easy, okay? And this is not telling we need to do the lazy kind of life. See, um, a lot of times once uh, students get to be around junior, senior, especially senior year, they really start getting concerned about college, okay? And oh, I, you know, I gotta, I'm really concerned. I'm going to the right one. Can I even get into a good one? You know, I don't want to go to this one. I, I want to. And they're all concerned and you know, trying to counsel through it and pray them through that, but. We're not supposed to worry, but we're also not supposed to be like, you know, yeah, I'm just like the birds, okay? Uh, are, you, are you taking the SAT? No, you know, not doing that. Are you taking good grades? Yeah, okay. Are you applying to schools? No, if they want me, they'll ask for me, okay? I'll tell you what, you're not going to college. That's all that is, okay? You're not going to go. It's, it's not saying, you know, we're just, mm, okay? We're not, we're not just doing that. We're working. We're doing what we know to do. But think about this. If, if those birds who, they don't sow, they don't reap, and having the Father takes care of them. When you're doing what you know to do, and you're obeying him and living obedience and working, how much more is he going to take care of you? And he says, are you not much more valuable than they? And um, this was a very significant uh, verse in the life of one of our interns in our, our youth group. A couple of years ago, he went through a cancer scare. And, um, well, he had a lump, and he went to the doctor, and the doctor's like, that could be cancer. I want you to go to this specialist. So he goes to a specialist and they run some tests and he goes, yeah, it looks like it's probably cancer. I want you to go to another specialist. So he goes to another specialist and they run a test and they go, this doesn't look good. We're going to run another test. And you know, there's this on and on and on. This is a period of weeks and he's stressed out and I watched him lose like 15 pounds in a few weeks. I mean, he just was so overwhelmed with the worry about his life, right? I mean, he's, he started doing the thing, you know, am I going to lose my hair? Am I gonna, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, just going through and, and the worry of, of that. And he told me that he went in his backyard, he's waiting on his final test to come in, and he was just full of that worry and stress. And he saw a couple birds land on the fence in his backyard. And right then the Holy Spirit said to him, are you not much more valuable than they? And he said, no, I don't normally think in Bible verses, so I know it was God. <laughs> and, uh, and right in that moment he said, I had peace. I still didn't know the result of my test, but I had peace. And, and uh, that's, I love this passage because if I really wanted to help you with worry, I kind of felt like I could just read it four times and uh, then pray and be done because he teaches so good about how we deal with worry. He goes on and he says this, why do you worry about clothes? Now, I thought about saying, ladies, this part is for you, but then I might have been offensive, so I'm not going to say that. Um, but guys, okay, I understand if the guys don't understand, don't relate to this. Because if you're like me, there's some mornings I wake up and I go and find some clothes and I see a shirt on the floor and I can't remember if it's a dirty one or a clean one. And so I pick it up and I just go, that one's good. <laughs> and I put it on. So for me, the amount that I worry about clothes is whether or not it passes the test, okay? And then that, that's it. Now, my wife is a different story, okay? She's in there trying to pick it out. I'm like, why don't you wear that? She's like, well, they saw me wear that two weeks ago. And I'm like, I don't even want to go there. Okay, so why do you worry about clothes, okay? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. I mean, you've never seen a, a flower out in the field going, oh man, it hasn't rained in three weeks. What are we going to do? And I, I, you know, it's kind of cloudy. Maybe that'll be good news. And is it mowing day? I don't know. And have you never seen a, a flower doing that, right? They don't do that. They don't spin. They don't labor. He says, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not 
Uh, Will he not much more clothe you, O you, of little faith? And of course, there he starts to get into part of a problem and the source of our worry is our lack of faith in him. And just if we look to the birds and we look to the flowers and what he's done there, come on, you are so much more important. And he's going to take care of you. So then he keeps going and he kind of gets to the heart of the problem and it's something that we know, but it's hard for us to grasp. And he says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And which we agree. You've never worried a situation better. I mean, you weren't worried about your finances, oh, all night long, spin, 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 and wake up, oh, we decided to give you a raise because you worried all night. Like, that, that has never happened. You, you've never worried a relationship better or worried. And, and in fact, in most cases, you wake up so, or you go into the situation so disoriented, it makes it worse because you're not handling the situation right because you're just dealing out of worry. And at the very least, you're just sick to your stomach because of the worry. And so we know it doesn't do anything, but we keep doing it. Right, And so he keeps going and he says, so do not worry. I know, okay. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? How shall I pass? How shall I pay for this? How shall we afford this? How shall I, you know, and on and on we can go as we have these things that we are worried about. And how how can I, how shall I, how shall I do that? And and again, I want to just point out, these are not like, he, he didn't pick like little petty things. In fact, in his audience, there may have been some people who had eaten their last loaf of bread. And they're thinking, if I don't find something tomorrow, me and my family are going to be hungry. So this is big. He's not saying, oh, you know, the little things. He's saying, hey, the things that you are really concerned about, don't worry about them. For the pagans run after these things. Now, pagans sounds really harsh, okay? I don't know what you think. I think like devil worshiper or something, okay? But pagan is someone who is an unbeliever. They don't believe in the true God. They're not believing in him. So he says they, people who are unbelievers, they run after these things. This is their pursuit. <clears throat> this is their concern. They're worried about those. He says, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. See, we can choose to run after, well, we can run after our blank. And that's what most people do. An unbeliever, I want you to say this, has to run after their blank because they're alone. If you're an unbeliever, you are facing that situation alone, you can worry about it. But if you're a believer, you are not facing it alone. You, are, you, have, you have a father who knows. He knows what you need. And he is there to be with you and to take care of you. And if you're looking at that blank in your life and that problem in your life, you need to remember, I'm not facing this alone. I don't have to, just, I don't have to make this my pursuit and what I'm running after. I have a father who knows what I need. Then he gives us the alternative. But seek first his kingdom and righteousness. Seek first. That means the first thing that I am going after, <clears throat> that I'm running after, is his kingdom. That is what he's doing in this world. That is where his will is happening. And his righteousness. That is a right standing with God. That is doing what he's told us to do. When we seek his ways and his will and his righteousness first, all these things will be given to you as well. That doesn't mean that, hey, I'm a believer now. He's going to make me a millionaire and, and I can rely on my money to make me happy. No, that, see, that's, that's not the right thinking. What that means is when I am seeking his kingdom, when I'm seeking his will and his ways, when I'm seeking his righteousness, the, the blanks and the things that I'm concerned about are no longer a worry because I am focused on him. And when I am, have my eyes on him, I can not have a concern about those. Yes, okay, if I have a financial problem, I'm going to be working, and I'm going to be finding ways to work on it, but it's not a concern. It's not a worry, because I, my focus is really on him, and I know that if, if I fall short, he won't. That's the difference in the way we approach it, and the way that we see it, and that we know that we can count on him, because we're seeking him first. And this is how he ends. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have enough worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So today, today, I'm not going to look at tomorrow. I can't do anything about tomorrow. Today, I'm going to focus on seeking him. And if I have a situation, I'm going to do what I know to do and let him take care of the rest. And I'm going to seek him, and I'm going to trust him, and I'm going to make him the focus. And when you make that decision, and when you begin to take your eyes off of the, the struggle, the blank, the problem, and eyes onto him, You get filled with hope, you get filled with peace, and he can take you into a a different place. Your default is not stress. Your default is trust in him. 
Now, as I was preparing this, I have, I have preached this passage a few times over the years. And um, so I was kind of reading through. And I usually just start right here in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, because it's just a nice, clean teaching on G- from Jesus on worry. And um, this time I was reading it, though, and I, I noticed something that I had just ignored before. And uh, so I want to go back to the, the first verse, the first verse that we read in, in 625. And it says this, Therefore I tell you, do not worry. And then I, I was looking, and I was like, oh, there's a, a therefore, right? Now, if you were here last time I preached, I told you, when you see a therefore, you got to ask, what is it there for? Right, okay. So why is that there? Like, what is he telling us to go, what is he talking about? And so I, I was actually reading in some old notes, and I was like, I don't remember what, what's before that. And so before I went to my Bible, I was kind of thinking, and I knew these weren't the verses, but I thought of a lot of good verses to go before it, like if I was writing it. <laughs> no. uh, like, wouldn't it be great if he said, in this world you'll have trouble, but I have overcome the world, therefore do not worry. Like, mm, that feels good. Okay, that makes me feel If he would have said, and all these things, you are more than conquerors, therefore do not worry. Okay, that would have been a great verse to go before. Or, um, My God will supply all your needs, therefore. Okay, all those things. Okay, but those would have been great. So this is what he says. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Therefore, do not worry. Now, I I actually was preparing this earlier this week, and I I said it to a couple of uh, people, and I told them about this, and and I read that verse, and they went, (laughs) that was the face I got. What does that have to do with worry, okay? And it seems so disconnected, but it's so important. Because if we choose to serve any other thing, we will have stress. Because nothing else can satisfy. Nothing else can take care of you the way that he can. And we cannot, he says, serve both God and mammon. Now, a lot of, um, that's not a word that we use. And a lot of translations say money or something like that. And, and the reason they do that, because mammon, it does mean uh, like wealth or riches. And he's saying you can't serve God and riches. But there's actually a little bit more depth to this word mammon. And um, so it, it, in the original language, it has a root word. Do you know what a root word is? A little English lesson? Okay. So like if you, let me use another example. So if I was to say aquarium, you know what an aquarium, the root word in that is aqua, right? Which means water. Like Aquaman, okay? I've never seen the movie. I'm assuming he has water powers or something, okay? Because Aqua, if I see that root word, I know what it means, okay? And I have that, okay? So in this word mammon, there's a root word. And I can't pronounce it because I don't speak that language, okay? So, but I can tell you what that word means, that root word means in, inside there. This means riches and things, but that root word means this. That in which one trusts. And I want to tell you, it's so appropriate that mammon riches have that in there because so many of us let money be that in which we trust. Because if I have enough money, I can pay for anything that goes wrong. If I have enough, then, I, then you know, we, can, we can get through. And then that is, in, that is what we often trust. But if anything other than God is that in which you trust, you will struggle with stress and worry for your life. Because he is the only one that that can provide truly for us. And, and, and it's so easy for us to look at the other things and go, if I just had that, it, it, I would be okay. And, and so we have all these other things that is that in which we trust. And I, I don't know what that is for you. For some of us, it is money. And if we get really honest, that, man, I feel good when we're making more than we're spending. And when we're not, I'm worried, okay? I feel good when that, okay? And, and money is that. For some of us, it's success and climbing that ladder and going further. For some of you, it's your talent, and your talent is what you count on, and you know you got that ability, and that's what you trust in. But if, again, if there's anything in our lives that is that in which we trust other than God, you're going to deal with stress. You're going to deal with worry. And I know none of us would say, well, yes, this money is my master, okay? So let's use another phrase that Jesus used just a little bit later. Is it what you run after? Is it what you seek? Because if anything is higher than him and what you're seeking and what you're running after, worry and stress is going to be what follows. The key is that he is what we seek. He is what we run after. Of course, you can try to make money. You can desire a nicer house. I'm not saying that, but that's not the the chief pursuit of my life. It is him and his righteousness and his kingdom. And then those things are not a worry. They're they're a part of my life, but they're not something that brings stress. So what I want to do is I want to give you um, a tool, some tools, for when worry comes. 
Because what's going to happen uh, in so many of our lives is a, is a blank comes along, a big a problem, a, a situation, and um, <laughs> COVID-19 just came to all of us, right? And so these situations, they come. <clears throat> and so I want to give you some tools to deal with those. Like if, if you had a nail that needed to go in, you know what tool to grab, right? A hammer. You got the tool ready. Okay, so I'm going to give you a tool that is ready for when worry or stress comes. And if you already have it, I'm giving you the tool to use this morning. But so here's, here's the tool. So if your life was on fire with stress, okay, we'll say it like that. This is what we do. We stop. First thing you do is stop. There's this great story in the Old Testament where God's people have come out of slavery and they're up against a Red Sea. Okay, this is a, an impassable um, object and, and here they are they're here and coming this direction is an army with the intent to kill them and you know what they do they start spinning they're very worried oh well, we should have just stayed in Egypt we were better there at least we weren't dead you know and oh what are we going to do and they're panicking and they're spinning and they're worrying and Moses looks at them and he says this the Lord will fight for you you need only to be still here they are they're spinning and they're worrying and he says hey stop and hey, listen, if you've been spinning and you've been spinning and you've been doing that, this is what we need to do. We need to stop. We need to be still for a moment. You need to force yourself, hey, I'm just going to get still. And then we do this. When your life is on fire with stress, you stop. Then you drop. I'll tell you, when you get those moments, you got to get down on your knees before your God. Now, do you have to physically, is there a verse that says, hey, you got to be on your knees? No. But this is a position of honor, surrender, and worship. Worship is pretty much the opposite of worry, by the way. And it's a, t it's a worship before him and just praying before him. This is a verse that says this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. When you feel the worry and your mind is spinning and things are going, stop for a moment. Drop in prayer and go to him and just begin to talk to him about your need and about what you have. <laughs> so when your life's on fire, you stop, drop, and then <laughs> roll. That would be, have you been to that church? Some of you, I have, you know, the roll of holy rollers. Okay, that's not it. And we're actually gonna do something else. We're gonna throw, okay? Stop, drop, and throw. Here it is, 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So here it is, you're spinning, you're going, you stop for a moment. You get down before him and you just, throw those worries, throw those concerns at his feet, cast them to him and say, I trust you with it. I give it to you. It's no longer going to be mine. I'm giving it to you. And all I got to focus on is serving you and living for you. Here's my blank. Here's my worry. Here's this thing. So you stop, you drop, and you throw it at his feet, and you leave it there for him to take care of. And then you can live free of the stress and the worry. Not free of the blank, but someone's taking care of it now. It's there, but he's in control, and you're free of carrying that weight on your shoulders. As I didn't prepare to say this, but I remember a, a few weeks ago, um, I got a text message from Robin that both of her parents were in being care flighted currently. And um, as a pastor, you know, I immediately was thinking, I'm going to have to find homes for these kids. <laughs> and um, I can tell you what I did. At first, for the very first second, worry popped into my heart. But it didn't stay very long because this is exactly what I did. I was in my kitchen. <laughs> I didn't actually get on my knees, but I immediately I was looking at my phone and I just stopped and began to pray. And I didn't know what was going to happen yet, but he gave me peace that God was going to get their family through, get them through. And I'm thankful that he brought healing and, and they're here today. And when, when those moments come, here they go, bam. What do you do? You stop. Don't allow that spin cycle to start. Pray. Give it to him, and you can be free. What I want to do this morning is, is pray for you, because some of you are currently in that. You're spinning, and you're anxious, and you're worried, and you don't know what, how the situation is going to go and what's going to happen next. I want to help you get free of it. So what I'd actually ask you to do, would you just, we all stand together, can we do that? And so as I'm praying, <clears throat> what I'd like you to do is if you are dealing with that right now and there's a worry and there's a stress, I want you to just open your heart up to God this morning. And as I pray, you pray too. And you begin to put that down. Put it down at his feet. Let him pick it up 
and carry it. Father, I thank you so much for your love. Lord, I pray that this morning we would just begin to trust you. We wouldn't trust in anything else. Lord, take our stress, take our worry, take our burdens. Deal with those blanks in our life, Lord. Lord, I pray that every person that is here, Lord, or watching online that has this anxious heart, this worry in them, that you would right now give them that peace that goes beyond understanding and that they would know that you're in control. Lord, I pray that when those, those things come, that we would remember, Lord, that we can be still in your presence, that we can go to you and that we can give you anything that's come against us. I thank you, Lord, for your peace and your goodness in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you go, I just want to read the blessing to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Be blessed as you go.